Today we're going to be focusing on the nature and extent of youth crime. So we'll talk first a little bit about where we get our information about youth crime. And we can break it down into three sources. We'll talk about the media, we'll talk about official statistics, and then we'll talk about self-report and victimization surveys. The media is probably where most people get their information on crime from. And there's a very big discrepancy between how information on crime is communicated in Canada versus in the United States. I think a big reason for this is that, especially in Canada with CBC, it's a not-for-profit news station. And so entertainment isn't necessarily first and foremost on this company's mind. Whereas in the United States, it doesn't matter which channel you're on, these news stations tend to be for-profit. It can be really interesting watching news in the United States in terms of how they present crime information because they try to sensationalize it to a real extreme. You've got people like Nancy Grace who will basically be paid to sensationalize crime. So this is what can contribute to a greater level of fear of crime in the United States. Another interesting element of the United States is that sheriffs and judges tend to be elected by the people, by citizens, as opposed to political parties or where sheriffs will be hired by police departments. In the United States, sheriffs get elected. And you can watch on TV commercials by judges advocating how the opponent that they're running against sentenced an individual to only 35 years in custody and therefore they are soft on crime. So it's a very different dynamic compared to here in Canada where we still see a little bit of sensationalization and we can still see some issues with inaccurate reporting due to a poor understanding of the justice system. We'll talk about this at the very end of the class. But most people are not actually going out and collecting data or reading research. They get their sources of information about crime from the media. When the media describes what's going on about youth crime, sometimes they'll refer to official statistics. And we get our official statistics on crime from three major sources, police, courts, and corrections. When we're looking at police data, we tend to get information about the rate of arrests. When we're looking at the courts, we tend to get information about the rate of convictions. When we're looking at corrections, we get more details about what individuals, what percent of individuals are actually sentenced to custody. These official statistics help us get a sense of because police are the gatekeepers to the justice system, this is why we will see higher arrest rates compared to higher charge rates and higher sentencing rates. Courts tend to reflect charge rates and we would see higher charge rates compared to higher sentence rates that are maybe more typical of correctional statistics. And this is because not all persons that are charged are convicted, but all persons that are convicted have to have been charged and have to have been arrested. And as we'll see in this class, when we look at the rate of crime over time amongst youth in Canada, we've tended to see over the last 20, 30 years, fairly steady declines in the rate of offending, which often kind of contradicts sometimes how the media tends to portray youth crime. The third source that we'll look at is from researchers and researchers can provide information on self-report data on offending and victimization surveys. Self-reported offending data refer to instances in which, for example, I would go into the Burnaby Youth Custody Center and when interviewing youth, I would ask these individuals about crimes that they have committed in the past, including crimes that maybe they did not get caught for. So this helps us identify which crimes individuals are committing but escaping punishment. A question that students might have reflects whether they think that youth would be truthful in talking about crimes that they committed but were not detected for. And what's really important in research, and I kind of alluded to it last week when talking about interview strategy skills, is that our interviews are confidential, meaning if the individual self-reported to me that they had committed a homicide offense and got away with it, that's information that I would have to keep confidential. We can do the same thing with victimization surveys, where instead of asking about times in which an individual perpetrated an offense, we can ask about times that they've experienced victimization. Part of the problem with looking at victimization surveys is that they won't capture all crimes because sometimes there are victimless crimes. 